there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Prestige pawnbrokers are at the top end of the market. I can get you to £125,000. Unbelievable. Specialising in luxury goods. Oh, that's so gorgeous. 50 million US dollars. Whoa! It's a little bit like winning a lottery for me. They bankroll asset rich, cash poor clientele. I've maxed out my credit card. We're looking for around a million euros for the whole collection. I'm in the business of making money. Whether it's cars, trains, boats, jewellery, watches, whatever it is, I want it. Based in affluent Surrey and London's historic jewellery district, huge sums of money change hands every day. You're looking well into millions. <gasps> this time... He's got a bicycle that's electric and does 45 miles an hour. Electricity is in the air. <laughs> So body beautiful. Body beautiful. <laughs> a girl's best friend. I could literally just do this all day. Guys, can you hear that thudding? And will James's latest bespoke boy toy have Joe jumping for joy? No, it's DJ, not bread making. <laughs> Welcome to the world. Oh my God, James, I don't like it. Of posh porn. <laughs> There are over 2,000 pawnbrokers in the UK. Do you know what sort of money you're looking for? Thousands. <laughs> Since starting his business six years ago... This is what it's all about. Former property developer James Constantino has carved a niche for himself. If you're targeting the well-off, you're targeting bigger assets, bigger profits and bigger money. Right in the centre of London's Hatton Garden... Hello. Hi, afternoon. Is the pawnbroker's busiest store. Do you have any idea how much you're looking to sell it for? Nine and a half thousand pounds. We are getting such amazing stuff and so much bling coming through the doors. One piece each time that comes in could pay off your mortgage. It's very striking, isn't it? I said, come and have a look, not a touch. I'm having a look. When it comes to precious stones, James's expert team know exactly what to look for. To determine the value of a diamond, you look at the four C's, cut, colour, clarity and carrot. Wow, that's beautiful. I'm no expert, and that's why I employ four gemologists, and they really know their stuff when it comes to bling. On the front desk, manager Alicia is ready to put her skills to the test. Hello. Hi. Hi, how can I help? I've brought a ring on to see if I could sell them. To okay, you. then, let's have a look. Why are you looking to sell? I love it, but I wouldn't mind selling it to get a bigger one. I mean, this one's already quite massive, <laughs> so I'm guessing the bigger one will be, what, 10 carat? <laughs> I wouldn't mind 10. I wouldn't mind 10, OK. <laughs> let's try to make 10 carat money. <laughs> Peter, come on, bring the drinks. One client with a desire for diamonds is 54-year-old Margot. Champagne, Margot? Ah, oh, lovely. Who lives the high life with her husband of 29 years. Say body beautiful. Body beautiful. <laughs> 56 year old Peter. My husband always wanted a, a lovely big house with a big garden, a swimming pool. We're actually living our dream. We always wanted to be in, in a place like this, and here we are. My bar just goes with the pool. So if you've got a pool, you've got a bar, <laughs> you've got a party. Margot and Peter haven't always enjoyed such a lavish lifestyle. We've both worked hard for it. It's not been given to us. We've gone through hard times, yeah. and we've come through it together, haven't we? Really yeah. strong. <laughs> you get the drinks, Mark. No, uh, your turn. <laughs> Madam? Thank you. Peter runs a private ambulance service, which has changed the couple's lives dramatically. We built it from a turnover of a couple of hundred thousand a year to quite a few million now. Cheers, Margot. Cheers. Happy days. Now in a position to enjoy the finer things in life, Margot spends her days with every girl's best friend. I could literally just do this all day. Kato, what do you think of this? You like black diamonds, don't you? <laughs> so I was always fascinated with rocks and stones. And then when I was a teenager, obviously, 
I would have loved big diamond rings, but can't afford them. Uh, I couldn't then. I can now. I don't think Margot will ever stop with this ring obsession. I think that the day she dies at a funeral, it'll rattle with rings. At my funeral. She may be a magpie, but Margot's managed to turn her diamond obsession into a busy business. She buys, she makes them nicer, she cleans them, she takes very good photographs of them and she makes profit on them. And then she puts it back into more rings. This one should be a 18 karat white gold diamond ring. That's really pretty. But there is one ring in her collection she didn't purchase herself. This one is what my husband bought me just recently, and I love it to death. I paid a lot of money for it, and I'd like to know what the highest price I could get for it, and if I could get a price that I would be happy with. I would consider selling it and getting something slightly bigger, slightly better. I would be happy with uh, eight carats, which is quite considerably bigger than this. This is uh, just one point off five carats. Peter paid £20,000 for the gift. Am I a little bit disappointed she's going to sell the ring? No, because if you can make a decent profit on that ring and she can turn it into an even better ring, theoretically, I've bought her the better ring. I wouldn't sell this for less than £30,000. It's easy worth that, so £30,000 would be the absolute lowest I would take for it. Margot loves big, clear, sparkling rings. And she wants to own the biggest ring in the world. And the way she's going at the moment, buying and selling the ring, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she has a ring on the size of a tennis ball within the next 10 years. Absolutely. But will the pawn shop think that the ring is worth the £30,000 the couple want so Margot can upgrade to an even bigger one? Let's have a kiss. Mm. <laughs> mm. This is a lie. Yeah. In the porn industry, when big names come in... With garrods, he's got potential, a very nice valuable item. Valuation can be straightforward. You can't go wrong with Chanel and Hermes. Easy to resell. But today, James has been sent something a little more unusual. Joe, you ain't going to believe what's coming here. Come and have a look. It's basically a giant speaker on wheels. Oh. A DJ van. Apparently, All right. it's puts out the same decibels as a fighter jet. Oh, I'm mm. glad he doesn't live near me. I like hearing the birds at this age. Who would want You're it? You'd silly pulling up a bingo in that, wouldn't you? <laughs> I haven't quite got that end yet. Well, you know what I mean. It's just so insulting. <laughs> no, I'm right. I'm with you on that. I mean, what would we do with that? I don't know anyone who plays any music anymore. <laughs> Put your name all over it. That hasn't making me tired just looking at it. <laughs> The DJ van belongs to 32-year-old Alex. We had to test the sound level, didn't we? Yeah. Just outside the offices. And his business partner, 36-year-old Raz. It'd be sad to see that van go. Yeah. There's nothing like that out there. It's just there ain't nothing like that anymore. The right person who sees that are going to fall straight in love with it. Alex and Raz have run a car hire and sales company in West London for the last four years. OK, just need four squiggles from you, Richard. Okay. Me and Raz were friends before we worked together. There was an opportunity to become partners with him. Um, and it's been amazing, to be honest. <laughs> Making a cup of tea, for one. You can't be up slacking <laughs> again, eh? Yeah, it's all right, Raz, I don't, I don't want a cup of tea. You sure? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> I think I spend more time with Alex than I do with my wife sometimes. <laughs> She's going to try that car for today. If she doesn't get on with it, okay. she's going to swap over into another one tomorrow. Good to see you, Richard. Oh, you too. Take care. Raph will take care. Competing for business in a crowded industry, Alex and Raz decided to get noticed by making some noise. So we come across a DJ van about about three or four years ago. Next minute you know, it's part of the fleet. The Mercedes van is kitted out with six high-performance subwoofers, 13 speakers, a state-of-the-art mixer and two DJ decks. You've got 30,000 watts being generated here. It's equivalent to an F-15 fighter jet taking off. The amount of sound and bass that comes through this is just phenomenal. 
This vehicle is the real deal. There's nothing else like it. It's absolutely deafening. When you actually hear this thing going at full capacity, it's frightening, to be honest. Alex and Raz paid £35,000 for the van, but now want the money to reinvest in their business. We're looking to take on new personnel. We've got some new fleet coming on. We paid uh, 35000 just under a year ago, um, and we're looking to get exactly what we paid for it. We don't want to be greedy. You know, it served its purpose for us, and we just want our money back out of it, to be honest. For this, they need James's help. I don't think we're going to sell this vehicle from just a, anybody just walking past and having a look at it. Um, this vehicle is, is pretty niche. But will James be impressed enough by the DJ van to help Alex and Raz find a buyer? Many of the pawn shop's clients come in with eclectic groups of items. I've been emptying out my wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. oh, God. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And a very specific asking price in mind. The way it came to about three thousand, I think. Which they hope will help them realise a very particular goal. We're short about about fifty grand in total that we uh, we need to finish off the project to the right standard. Today at head office, James is handling an inquiry from a man trying to power up a new business. I've just been speaking to a client. He sounds like a mad inventor. He's uh, working out of a garage at his mother's house. And um, apparently he's got a bicycle that's uh, electric and does 45 miles an hour. He sent me a guitar, a Rolex watch and a piece of art. And he wants to raise some money to put towards the development of his electric bike. I'd like to go out there and, uh, well, pretend I'm looking at these assets, but really I want to have a go on his bike. Well, that should fit. I can actually hear it. So a bit of brute strength and ignorance is what's required. The electric bike is the brainchild of 56-year-old inventor David, who lives in Surrey. I think eccentric's good, really. You know, why not? I, people who think out of the box are my favourite kind of people. David makes his living as a carpenter, but spends much of his spare time tinkering in his mother's garage. Literally, I'll just make it up as I go along, so... This is my favourite way to work, because even if you make a plan, it never goes to plan. Like this, I've got a flat drill. <laughs> It is in my nature to tinker. I never leave anything alone, really. It doesn't necessarily make you popular sometimes. Last year, David ran into trouble, which inspired his latest invention. Some months ago, I got disqualified from driving for speeding. I knew I was going to lose my licence, so I decided to build this electric bike purely for my own transport. And, uh, and it worked a treat. It cost 18p a day to run. Everywhere I went on it, people were pulling me aside, beeping at me, asking where they could get one. Two have actually chased me down in their cars and say, where do I get one of those? Another one was um, a policeman who stopped me and asked me to slow down, and he ordered one. <laughs> I can't make them fast enough, really. So David wants to turn his invention into a business. This is my dream retirement job. I don't want to be out on site as a carpenter anymore. I, I want to be in the workshop just doing what I love, creating these. Up until now, I've only been able to build one at a time because I can only afford one motor at a time. Now a situation has arisen that could help him raise some much needed funds. My mother's downsizing house. She's moving from this house to a house maybe half the size on the other side of town. Just in the back of the, back of the drawers here, I found a stainless steel Rolex Oyster from, I don't know, I think the 60s. This Max Chapman painting that I've never given a second look until recently, to be honest. 
even if I only realised the 500 quid it cost in 1979, uh, that still for me means that I can build another two electric motorcycles and I can crack on. He's also got a Fender Stratocaster guitar. It's the original 1940s pattern and shape. I've seen them for as little as £700 and I've seen them upwards of £2,000, £3,000. It would make such a lot of difference to, to this project. This thing has to be self-starting. I won't spend any of my money that I should be spending on my children. Days gone past, I've, I've got myself into trouble with piling money into madcap schemes. I want to raise the money this way so that it's something that doesn't make a dent uh, in their lives. But will David's eclectic collection raise the two to three thousand he needs to kickstart his electric bike business? A crucial part of the pawn shop's business is dealing in artwork. Blimey. Wow, they're pretty pert, aren't they? Pretty what? Pert. And handling well-known pieces can often be profitable. The item will be worth 90 grand. That's the best news I've ever, ever had. In Hatton Garden, Michael is dealing with a client who is looking to sell a Salvador Dali sculpture. We had a recent inquiry uh, from someone looking to raise money for the church, which seems like quite a nice cause. It's not an original one-off Dali, unfortunately. That would be quite nice if that was. This is an addition of 350. It will make an interesting feature piece in someone's house. The sculpture belongs to Kenyan-born Bishop Joseph and his wife, Reverend Catherine, who helped to run a charity in South London. Are you enjoying yourself? Our vision is to reach the unreachable, touch the untouchable, and love the unlovable. I've grown up in the church. When I went to high school, I had an opportunity to be an evangelist. This one reminds me the, the great day I was uh, consecrated as a bishop. That is the color for a bishop. You must have a cross and you must have that color. That color has a lot of meaning. That was also another day I will never forget. You can see that time we were very young and also handsome and beautiful. We help people in England. We do help the homeless by way of feeding, by way of clothing, and also by way of supporting in form of counseling. We are in Africa as well. We have a football team, and I'm happy to report we are two steps away to get to Kenya Premier League. Some of them are orphans, and we are happy to bring them together. When it comes to helping out in the community, Bishop Joseph and Reverend Catherine are hands-on. Today is an exciting day where we are doing our feeding program. We'll have some sandwiches, soup and tea. It's a whole mix of people, some of them they are well-wishers. We have uh, several homeless and also refugees as well. And, and you, my sister, how are you? Yeah, fine. You are from where? I'm um, from Albania. Oh, from Albania. Wow. At least seeing people happy, that's my joy. Because as some of them came here, it was cold, it was chilly, but now they are happy. Bishop Joseph and Reverend Catherine are also involved in charity work overseas and plan to visit projects in person. Visit two homes in a place called Katondo, and uh, we also visit some homes also in Nairobi. Next week we are going to Kenya because we want to go and put a smile on the face to children. With the orphans, uh, we take clothes, we take food. For us is one of the things that so fulfills our lives because we want to share whatever little we have with those ones who, who don't have anything. To fund their trip to Kenya, the couple are looking to sell the first sculpture ever donated to the charity. This sculpture was uh, donated to us by a well-wisher. We, we got the sculpture, I, I, I was wondering, what is this? Straight away, I researched. It was designed by Salvador uh, Dali. Wow, I was really shocked. 
whatever amount of money we will get from this sculpture, it will make a big difference. To us, that sculpture is a gift, and it's a gift that is going to be extended to many. It's now up to Michael to find a client with a taste for Dali, who's willing to move quickly. In the heart of London's jewellery district, statement pieces come through the door every day. Joy speaking. Oh, nice. Wow. The size of that, what are they looking for? 100,000. But occasionally, something a little more out of the ordinary turns up. And it's a stuffed fish in a glass case. And today is one of those days. Now listen. Guys, can you hear that thudding? It's really loud. Party what is car. it? Car salesman Alex and his business partner Raz want £35,000 for their DJ van, so Alex has brought it to the pawn shop, hoping a demo will impress James. Jesus, listen to that. Look at that fella's face. Got out the front and saw this DJ van, and all the neighbours had come out of their shops. I was thinking, oh no, they're going to love this. <laughs> So this is the this is the disco van, is it? It's causing a bit of a stir, isn't it? Turn it up a little bit, can you? I can't hear it. Yeah, pump it up. No, it's DJ, not bread making. <laughs> making a, a couple of, of pizzas. Rub that in there. I'll have a margarita. Oh, how funny! How much do you want for this? We want thirty-five thousand plus the vat. Thirty-five plus vat. Yeah. How old is the van itself? The van's two thousand and eleven. It's never been driven, it's always been trailered everywhere, so it's only got 1,600 miles on the clock. Right. How much was the van when it was just a standard van? I think the standard van is about, when it was brand new, it was about 25. Right, and, and how much was, was that new. bit of kit you put in it? The bit of kit in there is about 25 grand in there. So you got 50 grand's worth of gear and you're looking for 35 grand? 35 plus the van, yeah. There was no doubt about it, the DJ van was absolutely stunning, and when Alex mentioned the numbers, I got really quite excited. I'm just thinking who we could sell it to. That's why we got in contact with you. <laughs> That's our problem. If we... <laughs> right, well, I think you've got his attention. That's always a good thing. Yeah, I'm liking that. My mum's looking for a new car. We're going to put our thinking hats on and uh, yeah, see what we can we'll do. See what we can do. No, thank you for yeah. bringing it down. Thanks for coming down. It's yeah, lovely yeah, to hear it. Yeah, thanks yeah, nice thanks for coming down. We'll be in touch. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cheers. I'm glad that they, they liked it, you know, the feedback was good from them, so fingers crossed they can find something for it. Well, 35 grand is a lot of money, but it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of van and there's a lot of noise coming out of it. It's just a matter of finding the right person. Something more typical of the pawn shop's trade is being appraised by manager Alicia, diamond lover Margot's ring. Even though the certificate um, seems quite accurate when it comes to the size. It mentions it's an emerald cut, and the picture of a stone looks a bit different to, to the one I'm holding. This is an emerald cut stone. This isn't. Hi, Alicia. Hi. Have you got a second? Yeah. What have you got? The customer provided us with a copy of a certificate, but they don't match up, unfortunately. It's not actually the same stone. Oh, OK. And the customer's given you a price for this? Yes, £30,000. And is she basing that information on this? Uh, to be honest with you, if it had been that ring, then that, that you probably is looking at 30 grand. OK, so look, I'll keep hold of these. If you want to get back to the client and let her know that that uh, doesn't belong to this ring. OK. Lovely. All right, cheers, Alicia. Thank Thanks. You. So with the certificate not matching up, Alicia must now value the ring based on its merits. <laughs> This morning, Bishop Joseph and Reverend Catherine are bringing in their Dali sculpture for Michael to assess. I think I recognise this. Can I have a look? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Tell me a bit about this. We are trying to raise some funds through it because we want to give uh, so many people a smile. Fantastic. Really, we wanted money quite fast yeah. on the basis that uh, we are going to feed some homeless children. About a week we have and get you some money. If possible. Yeah. If possible. Okay. Thank you so Thanks much. So much for thank, you, thank you. Okay. It's a tight time frame, but that's not the only thing worrying Michael. We'll try our best and get the highest possible price. 
because the market is completely saturated with Dali. 90% of the time, they're worthless. I have seen this edition come up at auction quite frequently. So we do have an idea of what they go for, but the range is quite massive. But it was a gift, and I think by the sounds of it, they're just looking to get as much as possible. The money is for a good cause, so it's charitable, and to that end, we'll try and get the best price possible. With the money urgently needed for the couple's charity trip, Michael will have to work quickly. Morning in Hatton Garden. Thanks, Joy. Did you spill the milk on the way up? <laughs> no, I don't want you to drink too much. You don't want me to drink too much milk? Yeah. Thanks. It's like Guinness. Did you get Guinness? I'm more easy going than you. In Surrey, inventor David is hoping to cash in some assets to invest in his electric bike business. The more I can raise on these items, uh, the happier I'll be. And I'm just hot to trot, I want to get on with it. David's hoping to raise two to three thousand pounds, and boy toy lover James has decided to visit him personally. He's invented an electric bike, um, basically, and he wants to pump some money into the development of that. It does 50 miles an hour, this bike, apparently. It's uh, quite interesting, because it sounds a little bit dangerous, and uh, if there's an opportunity to jump on it, you know, it'll be a good day out. But first, James has to look at the items David wants to sell. How James, do? how do you do, mate? How are yeah. you? All right. Yeah, come on in. Do you want to start with the painting? All right. Uh, what can you tell me about this? Well, it doesn't do anything for me at all. Looks a little bit like rising damp. <laughs> I believe it's one of a series of seven. Two in this palette, i.e. in this run, are in the National Collection. There's, there's actually Providence on the back. Right. Here, Moulton Gallery. This was 500 quid in 1979. Well, that was a lot of money then. It's an awful lot of money. Yeah. That's potentially got some legs. What else yeah. have you got? This... Fender uh, that's been mine for quite a few years oh, yeah. and, and I've played an awful lot. It's a 50-year anniversary model. It's a celebration model, is it's it? It's a celebration yeah. model. And it's so got a different a bit, profile neck. Might be slightly rarer. It's the, uh, slightly rarer. The Fender and the R, is that it? Uh, no, actually. Well, while I remember, there's a little Ooh. bit of what might be treasure. Treasure? Well, I like there. treasure. Late 50s, 60s, okay. stainless steel oyster. Perpetual. Well, some of these can be worth quite a lot of money. I mean, the problem with that is the bracelet is completely knackered. It's so yeah. stretched. Yeah. What do you want the money for? For my electric motorbike company. So you're developing, or have you made these electric? I've made, I've made several of them. Really? I've, I've got my prototype here. Well, well let's. We'll if call you, it, if uh, you'd like to have a look. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, sure. Although I went round David's to look at the antiques and the art, it was the bike that floated my boat. I really wanted to try it out. This is my everyday transport. All charged up and ready to go. Horn. That's nice. Backlight as well. If you look at that, if you can actually identify what I've, let's say, upcycled that out of. Don't tell me. Don't tell me just yet. Ain't got a clue. <laughs> it's a soup ladle. I couldn't find a vintage light for it. It was too expensive. So you mean I mean, I'm going to be riding around on a soup ladle? Absolutely. That's, that's yeah. I love it. It's mad, isn't it? All right, well, I'm up for it, you okay. know I me. Mean? I think the bike was a work of art. I really needed to get on it and try it out. Just in case there's any traffic. Fantastic. And literally hit the trigger and off you go. Well, it's been lovely chatting. Oh, there I go. Mind out, kids. Yeah, I'm picking up speed. This electric bike was absolutely phenomenal. It whizzed along at such a rate, I couldn't quite believe it. Oh, shit. Bike nice and early, James. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this brings a smile to my face. It's amazing what you can do with a spatula and a cup of soup ladles. Oh. Yeah, I'm loving this. The wind in my hair, the open road. I sort of forgot myself when I was on the bike. I'm sure I looked like a raving lunatic going up and down this road on that thing. 
This is fantastic. You've done brilliantly well with this, and I can see why you want to get the money to put this into production properly. Sure. This is just a great bit of kit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to appraise the art and the watch, and I'm going to come back to you with some numbers. Thanks for your time today, and I'll sort the other like bits it. out. Lovely. Fantastic. Thank you. Cheers, mate. At this stage, I really don't know whether these pieces are worth 500 quid or 10 grand, so we're going to have to look into it, and it's going to take some time, but we've got the information we need now, and we'll let David know in the coming days. In Hatton Garden, Alicia has had to go back to the drawing board after discovering jewellery collector Margot's diamond ring doesn't match the certificate it came in with. I think she based her expectations on the certificate. Not being a diamond specialist, obviously, this is where she gets her knowledge from. Unfortunately, we have to disregard the paperwork and value the ring on its own, which makes the, uh, the appraisal process a bit more difficult and not so straightforward. Margot is hoping for £30,000 for the diamond ring. But before Alicia finalises a price... Bye, Josephine. See you. Enjoy yourself. James wants to get a second opinion from jewellery expert Ian. We've assessed it, we've got a value in our heads, but the good thing about having Ian on your doorstep is you can pop around and see him and he'll give you his opinion. And to be quite honest with you, nine times out of ten he gets it spot on. How are you? Not bad, are you all right? Good, yes. You're looking at sparklers. Darling, all with sparkling. Look at this, I'm sparkling with this. Oh, this right, has just yeah. come in. Oh, beautiful. Isn't it lovely? You gonna have that one? I think so. Why not? <laughs> Why not? You only live once, don't you? <laughs> now, look, the uh, problem with that one, unfortunately, is that the client has turned up with a copy of a certificate that she says comes with it, and it doesn't seem to be That's right. not the same stone. No. Nothing like it. No. And I suppose she paid a lot of money for that. She's given a pretty penny for it, but she's looking to sell it on. But it's quite a clean <gasps> stone, isn't it's it? It's clean. But, James, when you get it in the right light, you can see how yellow it is. Wow. You like it, don't you? I don't mind a bit of colour in my stone. It doesn't bother me. But for an investment person, no. They're going to complain. What do you think about the saleability of it? 90% of the people want a round stone. But because it's so lively, I think it's, the possibility of selling it is quite strong. Mm. So yeah. clarity is good. It's got mm. size going for it. Definitely got the size going for it. But your problem is colour and the cut. Lovely. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. It's nice to good have to you coming up. Yeah, Thank you no so much. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ian. Cheers, Enjoy. mate. Thank okay. you very much. Well, look, he's given us uh, his honest opinion. We always knew this was going to be a tough one, and now I've got to go back, make some decisions, and uh, call the client. In Weybridge, history and memorabilia expert Lawrence is researching the value of inventor David's Max Chapman painting and Fender guitar. It's a Japanese Fendo Stratocaster. 1946 to 1996, 50-year anniversary model in baby blue. Are they any...? No, I didn't think, think it would be. The fact is, it's basically a copy, isn't it? Cheers, Ron. Bye-bye. Well, that's off to a bad start already. It is only basically a copy of a famous guitar. So 1962, a great year for arts, a great year for wine, and a great year for the population, cos I was born. And the first thing, whenever you look at a painting, is to actually look at the back. All you've got is actually the gallery sticker. We actually bought it. This is actually a bigger piece, very similar. So the actual initial estimate's 500 to 700. It's not looking great on this artist, to be quite honest with you, because 50% haven't sold, and a further 25% of that have all sold for under 300. The guitar's not great, so really any value or any money we can do is really going to be based on Monica getting a good value on this Rolex watch. After an initial appraisal, Richmond branch manager Monica is taking the watch to an expert to get a second opinion. He is very, very knowledgeable and specialised in all vintage watches. I love vintage watches, but, um, you know, I cannot compare the, his knowledge. Hello. Monica. How are you? All right, how are you? Good to see you. And you? 
So what have you bought today? It's a day just. Okay. 1946. Normally, really early ones have got, yeah, hands like that, dagger hands. The dial's fairly early because it's got a step going all the way around it. Can you see that little step? Mm. The shape of the markers are little triangles, and that indicates it's early too. On very early ones, the date goes black, red, black, red. So does it on this one? It's not flipped red, so it's probably not 40s. How oh, is it? Um, we have to look further. There could be a date stamp in the case back. Let's get inside it and have a good look. There's a tiny little date stamp. And what it says, looking closely, it says 1159. Oh, no, it says 59. Okay, so yeah, 1959, the second quarter of 1959. It's not a particularly rare model, but really beautiful. Well, thank you very That's much. Okay. One more time, and uh, Take see care. you next time. See Thanks. you soon. Inventor David wants two to three thousand pounds, but will his guitar, painting, and watch be worth that much? Alex and Raz are back at head office to see if James can spin them a deal on their bespoke DJ van. I've done a lot of work on it. The guys have been searching high and low for a buyer. They might just uh, look favourably on my offer, so we'll have to wait and see. 35000 is what we paid for it, and that's what we're looking to, to get for it. We know it's probably worth it's more It's probably worth more than that, yeah. Hi there. Good to see James. Grab a seat. Thank Thanks, you. mate. Is the van outside? No, we didn't bring it today. You've touched it away, have you? Yeah, it's under, <laughs> under wraps. So, I mean, look, it was great to see it on the day that you brought it down, and Jo being quite keen on uh, dancing, you know, she soon got into a rhythm, as you, I don't oh, know if you noticed she that. Yeah, 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 she did. Yeah, yeah, she was sort of harking back to her old disco <laughs> days. All right, well, look, I have got some news for you. Um, it's not as though it's, you know, a van for a couple of grand, it's a big number. I've got to tell you now that we haven't got someone for it, um, so it's not going to be a matter of me uh, transferring 35 grand plus that over to take. But um, on the positive side, um, I've got another option for you. If you want to raise some capital against it and you need to pump it into something else, we can lend you £20,000 against, secured against the van to see you through to do whatever you want with. Yeah, appreciate your, your offer on it. Um, it's not something I don't think we're looking for as, as a logbook loan. Right. Keep in touch, and uh, if you're passing again, come past with a van and we'll have a street bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, thanks, Brilliant mate. item. Thanks for coming in. That's all right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, if you change your mind about that 20 grand, it's always on the table. Thanks, so. James. Appreciate it, James. Right, cheers. Nice Thank one. I'll walk you out anyway. Thanks, mate. Um, just in case you steal anything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for me, it's always a disappointment when we can't close a deal. They left with a smile on their face, which is, which is always a, a positive. Um, much better than them leaving, crying their eyes out. Um, and we've had that in the past, I must admit. Obviously, I'd, I'd love him to say, yeah, there's 35,000 plus the VAT and uh, happy days. But realistically, we, we knew that wasn't going to be the case. It's such a unique piece of kit. It'll go. Joe obviously, is going to be a bit disappointed at the fact that we don't own it because she can dance like Wacko Jacko, but has got no music to do it to. The first one is uh, 1.9, which is almost two carat. At Hatton Garden, Michael has had to work quickly, but is now ready to make an offer on the Salvador Dali sculpture. With an item like this, if we had the time, we can try and find private buyers. But given the fact that we essentially have a week, it makes it a very tricky thing. In South London, it's a big day for Bishop Joseph. We are expecting today to get the pricing for the sculpture, and uh, a bit excited. He's hoping the statue can fund a charity trip overseas. Given the fact that they're trying to raise money for charity, hopefully he'll be happy with the sorts of offers we can give them. Uh, 
Hello, Joseph speaking. Joseph, hi. Michael from Prestige. Hi, Michael, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Obviously, you know why I'm calling to uh, discuss your Dali piece. Okay. We've done a lot of research and we've also got some, some figures back from our dealers and a couple of auction houses too. Okay. The market is really flat for this. I think if we had more time to find yes. uh, private buyers, yes. we could substantially increase the price, but within the week time frame that we've had, the best sale price will be £4,000. Wow, wow. The second option is that we can offer a loan against it at £3,000. OK. So what do you think about that, about those two options? Yeah, I think uh, if we go for option two... So that at least we can give you more time to get the right buyer. Yeah, we'll be very happy and at least thank you. We also we appreciate for your kindness because... Uh, Our sculpture was donated to our organization, at least for a good cause. Of course, yes. I'm so grateful as well, sir. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. He's happy with that. I think it gives him the funds he needs for his trip, after which time either we can find the right buyer or he can obviously take it back. Though that's not what I was expecting, but I appreciate what they have done. Headquarters, a decision has been made on jewellery dealer Margot's diamond ring. Look, this has been a real difficult one for us. The certificate does not match the ring in terms of the imagery on it. Uh, and we're of the opinion that the uh, colour grading might be a little bit out as well. So there are issues. So I think what we ought to do is... Do you want to... Are you going to give her a call or do you want me...? I was thinking maybe you'd like to join me in that conversation. Think, I thought you might say that. <laughs> <laughs> Margot was hoping for £30,000 for the ring bought for her by her husband, but has been told by Alicia that the certificate doesn't match up. High five. Yay. <laughs> Good boy. I'm a little bit nervous uh, about what might be the offer or, or no offer. Hello. Margot, hi, it's uh, James from Prestige here. How are hi, you? Hi, James. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very well, very good. Um, I'm just with Alicia. Yeah. On the emerald ring, I think we've got some problems with it, purely because the paperwork doesn't match, and that sort of rings alarm bells. And we've looked here, and it's got a bit of a tint to it, to be honest with you, uh, that yeah. does sort of detract from its value. And I know you're looking for £30,000, weren't you? I was hoping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't realise really... that it was. Uh, a, a lesser colour. Yeah. We aren't going to get anywhere near your 30 grand. In fact, to be honest with you, it would probably be around the £10,000 mark for it. Really? That bad? When they get to the level of tint that the stone's showing, they become really, really quite difficult to move on. I'm sorry to disappoint you on that. No, that's OK. That's OK. Thank you for uh, looking at it and uh, giving me your opinion and, and finding out the truth about the dime as well, which I didn't know. OK. Thanks, Margot. And thank you. Cheers, okay. Margot. Thank you. Bye. Bye, James. Bye. I think that went as well as it could uh, do, to be honest with you. That's uh, quite a big drop in the price I wanted. Um, 10,000 for the emerald is what uh, James was offering. A little bit gutted, if I'm honest. I was expecting it to be lower, but I didn't expect it to be crashingly lower. Margot seemed to take it quite well, to be honest with you. You know, being told that you haven't got the correct certificate and it doesn't quite match up, especially when you've paid 20 grand for something, is not always uh, well received. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm going to keep it or go back to where I bought it. I'm going to make that decision when I get the ring back, I think. Okay. Come on, let's have a cuddle. Let's have a cuddle. In Surrey, inventor David is waiting for James to make an offer on his eclectic group of items to help fund his electric bike business. I'm just really hoping that when James phones me, it's just something. He's a fascinating guy. We've been down to his place, tried out his electric bike, had a lot of fun. We've done some work on the pieces and I think we're in a position now where we've got to give him some news. Hello. David. James. Hello, mate. How are you? How are you, mate? You all right? Yeah. Yeah, fine. 
As you know, we looked at the pieces when we came down and we've done some work. Unfortunately, it wasn't at the level we initially hoped for. We did some work on the guitar, as you know. Right, yeah. And again, the numbers, um, unfortunately, didn't come out. But the, the watch, now that really got me quite excited because sometimes those vintage Rolexes can be worth a hell of a lot of money. And we did a lot of uh, work on it and we were really hopeful that this could be one of those rare examples. This one, unfortunately, because it didn't have the box and papers and it needed uh, quite a bit of work on it, it's not super rare, um, but we still think it's a good number for an old Rolex. But with the art, the guitar and the watch, as a lump sum, we'd probably get to £2,000. Well, How do you feel about that? Uh, well, I'm just over the moon, actually, mate, because... I, I, had, I had no expectations on the art at all. Don't even like it. <laughs> and the, uh... well, you're not alone what, on that one. I describe it as a damp patch. <laughs> to be fair, I've actually seen better damp patches, so... Uh, <laughs> if that gets you to where you need to be for the time being, if it you does. find anything else, then do come back to me. We're uh, only round the corner and we'll be happy to help. OK. Thanks for your time, James. Cheers, talk, mate. Thank talk you. Talk to you very soon. Cheers. Bye now. Now I can just crack on with it instead of instead of you know uh, working hand to mouth. He was quite pleased with that, and I think it needs it gets him where he needs to be, which is important. I'm I'm as happy as you like. Fantastic, two grand for stuff that was probably just going to be chucked out anyway. So uh, yeah, fantastic.